Hello, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries, and today I would like to show you the response to a question that I had, a question from a user that is in the aerospace business. Uh, this user had an engine, a whole engine, that is on a gimbal rocket, and the gimbal had certain degrees of freedom. This uh, person wanted to see how the clearance would be uh, given some inputs in terms of mechanism of the rocket. And so I can't show you the rocket, um, but I can show you a very nice, a, a nice little simple case that I put together to show you the techniques that I used in the animation package. In the animation package, you can create this thing called the motion envelope or an envelope. The envelope is a result of sweeping a solid uh, or a uh, part of an assembly, a bunch of components through an actual um, uh, choreography, if you will. Um, you give it the motion that you want and you see which way it sweeps or how much it sweeps and you um, end up getting a faceted solid that you can use to do other things. So there's some really cool uh, techniques that I used to do this. And so I'd like to take you through it real quickly. And I know you're probably really busy, so I'm not gonna waste your time and just get right into it. Um, there's a nice technique where if you have a mechanism, you can individually create components for that mechanism, but that's not always the easiest way to go. Uh, if it's a simple mechanism, you can create different uh, bodies in the same part file. So as you can see, uh, what I have here is I'm going through the current feature uh, the ability in NX, and every time I click, I can show you a different feature that was done. So this particular um, example has this base with this little swinger in it, and it's got this clevis. So as I uh, go down and select the different entities that I can create, you can see how I created the clevis, okay? And then I created this thing that is um, swinging around this, um, this, uh, this, this base. And I'm doing that with just simple extrusions and not uniting them. Then there's another clevis that I need and I use blends on that. And I did a shell and then I did at some point a hole that goes through. I've got two clevis, clevises, clevi. <laughs> and then there's a tube that's welded to this, uh, this swinger. Uh, there's the base and there's the swinger. So here's the tube, the tube has a hole in it and the tube has this other welded piece uh, to it. This is a two and a half inch by two and a half inch piece of steel, but it is a tube. So I, um, I shelled it out. Um, at some point I united it all together. And um, at some point, um, I decided that I, w I really wanted to model the welds as well. So I used the weld tool. Here's a fillet weld on that side. And um, there's a bunch of other welds in this thing because it's uh, relevant to, or I should say it's pertinent to the geometry. And if we're going to simulate the geometry, the welds would be uh, actually important. So you could see I weld around there. I weld it around there. So that's the weld tool. It's a powerful, fantastic tool. Um, you use it very in a very similar way to a face blend. Uh, and then I made a datum plane because I want to make a boom that comes off of here. The datum plane was necessary to do that. Um, I put these two little loops, if you will, on this uh, edge on this um, uh, this tube that I extruded, and I unite those together at some place. And then I made this one sketch that's going to represent a boom arm. Okay, extruded it, um, did the other necessary things. And as you can see, I kind of go and develop it. And I make this thing a clevis. I do a extrusion, I do a shell, and keep going, keep going. Then at some point, I've got these two little uh, loops on here. There's a loop here, there's a loop here. And I want a piston that uh, actuates the, the boom, the boom arm. So the piston I've sketched with one sketch, and I think NX is so awesome, the fact that I could use one sketch and use it for different things. So as you can see, I've revolved the, uh, what I call the piston 
rod and I've followed the piston, I've shelled it out, I've united this little clevis to it, and I've extruded the hole through it, and I've extruded the hole through there, done some more filleting and some welding, and now I have the um, mechanism design in one part file. It's not an assembly, um, and it has to be, but now that I have it as a solid, I can go into the interface command. I love this command, interface. And what I do in the interface is every time I select a body like this, I can go and I can name that body. Let's like call this interface properties. I'll call this Clevis 2. Clevis 2. So I've got um, a bunch of interfaces that I've already made for this thing. And it's really cool that when you go to the part navigator and you go up here, you can say product interface and you can see in the output all the different um, interfaces that I've created. So I've, been to cre I've created base, boom arm, little clevis, piston, the piston shaft. Uh, I call this whole thing the rotator and the small clevis. Great. Then the next step uh, in this process is to actually create parts. So for example, you saw that I created an interface for the small clevis. So now I can make a part file called small clevis, just like that. Um, it's going into the same directory. I say, okay. Um, oh, I already have that part. <laughs> Let's call it Steve. Um, I don't have a part that's called Steve, Steve W. Um, and then uh, what I did or what I do is I go to home, more, there's wave interface linker. And I go to the main part that I was working from, which I call random assembly uh, or random envelope. And then I click on small clevis and lo and behold, it comes in like that. So um, I do that for all the parts. And then I go and I make an assembly. So I've got an assembly here that I call the machine assembly. And as you can see, it's got um, this as a component. Um, let's go in and see the components. Here's the base. I call this the rotator now. There's the boom arm, piston, piston shaft. I've got the small clevis, and I could put another one here, but I'm not going to. Um, and now I want to see how to animate this thing. So great, I've got all the components, and what I'm going to do is, uh, I've already animated this once, but I'm going to delete uh, my animations so that I can do them from scratch for you them, delete them, okay? And now we'll go through the animation process. Now, if I didn't put in already um, the mating condition, if I had not done that, or I should say the assembly constraints, I would not be able to use this button, which is adopt assembly constraints or joints and couplers. If I press on this button, it's really powerful, it's great, it will, select all of these components and make them rigid bodies. And then it will select um, a concentric command and make it a revolute. And it'll, you know, it'll do all these other uh, things for me. But for this particular video, I don't want it to do anything automatically because I want to really go through the process with everything. So the very first thing I've got to do in a solution is to make rigid groups. And so I'm going to select this thing and I'm going to call it the boom arm. Oops, help if I, right, boom arm. Okay, and I'll hit apply. Uh, I'll select this body and call it the swinger. Swinger, apply. I'll select this little component and call it the base. I'll select this one and call it the piston. or let's call it the piston can, okay? Apply, I'll call this one piston rod. So there we go. I have all of my, um, all the components that I really care about. I'm just gonna leave the clevis out because I'll be able to demonstrate the principle for you without that. Terrific. So now I have all of my rigid bodies. There's the base, Umar, the piston, the piston can, the piston rod. Um, this thing, um, I don't know how that got in there, but I'll delete it because the thing that I want. And the swinger. So I had one extra for some reason. I probably just hit enter in the wrong, wrong time. 
sometimes it's not so easy to narrate as you're modeling, but I try. Okay, the very next thing I've got to do is create the joints. And the joint command is fabulous. I mean, it's so easy to use. First thing I like to do is do my fixed joint, which is not really a joint. It's just like a fixed constraint. So there you go. There's a fixed joint there. Hit apply. Then I need a revolute. And I need a revolute between this body and that body. And the vector upon which it's rotating looks like that. And the point where that vector applies is the center of this arc. So I say OK on that. And now I've got a revolute joint right there. I need a revolute joint here, here, and there. So I'll just hurry up and do that. I'll go to the joint command. It's on revolute. And I'll, uh, oh, now before I do the revolute, I'm going to um, I'm going to name these things so that when I look at them later, they make some sense to me. So this revolute, I'm going to rename as the swinger to base rev. That's the swinger to base rev. And good. So now I'll go to the joints and I'm going to make another revolute between uh, the uh, piston can and the uh, swinger and the vector I'm going to, uh, in order to um, specify the vector, I'm going to select this little circle center or I'll select that cylindrical center and I'll select this point right here. And as you can see, the revolute is going through there. And this one is called the piston, piston can to swinger rev. There we go. And we'll hit apply. I'll do it again. This may be a little boring now. I'll select this one. I'll select that one. I'll vector base at the circle. I'll select this center and make sure that the vector direction uh, is specified by. Let's do this here. Let's make that the vector direction. There we go. And this one is going to be the Swinger to boom, swinger to boom, arm rev, and apply. Okay, got one there. We need one here. This one is going to be the boom arm to um, pivot uh, uh, this and rod. <laughs> so we select that one, like this one, like the vector. Uh, uh oh. Vector should be that face. Select the point at which it applies. And we do the boom arm to piston rod rev. And we say apply. Okay, now we need one more thing. And that is a slider between these two. A slider, I'll select this one first. That one second. Specify a vector as the base of this guy. There's the vector. And um, that's all I need, apply. Okay, and this one I'm going to rename. Now that I've applied it, I've got to rename it. Where is it? Right there, slider joint and I'll rename. Okay, so this one is going to be slider to, no, it's going to be the um, piston can to piston rod slider. There. Enter. So I have all of the joints that I need to make this a reality. Terrific. So now what I want to do is I want to know what happens when this piston is being actuated plus or minus 10 inches, and this thing is rotating 360 degrees, and this one goes through, let's say, five cycles. So what I want to do now is create a position motor. The position motor is going to be on the uh, piston can to piston rod slider like this, and it's going to... Um, this whole choreography is going to go, I call it a choreography, it's going to go for 10 seconds. So from zero to two seconds, this thing's going to go a distance of 10. And then I'll add an event, insert, and from two to four seconds, 
it's going to go back the other way, minus 10. And I'll add another event from four seconds to six seconds. This thing's going to go 10. And from six seconds to eight seconds, each of these events is two seconds, obviously. This one's going to go minus 10 again. And finally, big finale, it's going to go from uh, eight seconds to 10 seconds. And we're going to go in. Great. Yeah, let's just test that out and make sure it's working the way we want. And I can do that by simply hitting the play button. And there it goes. It actuates 10, goes back, it actuates 10 again. Okay, so that's working. Stop it. Great. Next, I wanted to uh, swing um, 360 degrees in that 10 seconds. And so I'll do another position motor. And that will be the swinger to base rev. And that will be a, uh, um, in 10 seconds, we're going to go 360 degrees. Okay, there. So now we do the play. We watch it for 10 seconds and make sure it's doing exactly what we want. It's going up and down as it's revolving 360 degrees. That's awesome. Okay, now what we want to do finally, is we really want to know how much space that takes up as it goes through its motion. And so this command is really cool. It's called the envelope command, envelope. What you do here is you select bodies you want to see or that you want to know how much space they take up. And what you can do is you make a translucent lucent body, but I kind of like to make it not so translucent. Um, and then your accuracy, um, I'm going to leave it on high. There's low, medium, high, and custom. So I'm going to just put it on high accuracy th so you can really see um, the detail of what it does as it swings. And then you select OK. And it takes a while because there's a lot of math going on. And you wait patiently. And then you have a faceted body that looks like that. That is the exact path that this thing takes. That, so it did the boom arm, and now it did another solid for the uh, piston rod. And, um, yeah, and since I have a high accuracy, it's really doing a lot. And then there is the uh, solid for the... Uh, actual piston. Um, when you see these in their transparent mode, sometimes it's not so easy to look at them. And so I'm going to select, 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 Gold J, make them non-transparent. And then you have actual solids that show you exactly uh, the path that they take and where you can place other pieces of geometry without them being hit. Uh, that's a powerful, powerful technique. I love it. Um, and this uh, gave, literally gave my uh, colleague who's doing rocket engines a really good feel that the rocket engine was not going to crash into certain things, I guess. And there you have it. Now, when you go back to the part navigator, you will see that there is a, a, a little group called non time stamp geometry. There it is. And so that's where these lightweight bodies are. Faceted bodies here, here they are. So if later on they get in the way, you can hide them here. You can bring them back. So there you have it. You have the envelope command in animation have a very nice method to ensure that when you're creating a machine, when you're creating an automatic machine or something that's actuated or pulleys or whatever it might be, something in a gimbal, and it has this motion and you really want to make sure that there's enough clearance, you can use the envelope command. Again, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries. Thanks very much for your usership. I really appreciate it. I love your comments. I try to respond. If you have a question, you can certainly um, uh, email us uh, at info at designviz.com. Maybe you will see, um, based on your question, um, a nice little video that shows the technique that we would suggest. You can obviously go to our website, 
uh, www.designviz.com and there's um, books that will show you much more detail about all this stuff. Don't be a stranger. Uh, I hope you enjoy these techniques. And again, thanks for your viewership.